Stride length is basically the, the distance between the toe off, the moment the athlete toe leaves the ground, and the ground contact in the next step. So it's basically the amount of ground the athlete will cover while their body is, is in the air in a sprinting stride. Stride length is a big deal because it is the outcome of, of uh, proficient and ideal force application. In sprinting, the world-class sprinters, the faster they are, the less steps they take in the 100 meters, meaning they have bigger steps. But they don't have those bigger steps by overstriding, uh, casting their foot out in, th in front of their body, having their foot land way ahead of the center of mass to create breaking force and slow them down. This is not it. Stride length. Um, the limited factor for an efficient stride length is how much force can you apply to the ground and how much impulse you can apply to the ground before the body leaves the ground. At that moment, your body will cover a lot of ground and have a very good stride length um, that will help you sprint faster without overstriding and casting your foot out and, and having the foot lands in, in front of the center of mass and creating braking force to slow you down. Now, there are some, some studies that suggest, uh, those are old studies, 50 years old, uh, finished study that shows that, and all of that is generic, but you can use it as a guidance, uh, guideline for how uh, big you stri your athlete's stride length should be during the upright sprinting phase when their body becomes perpendicular with the ground. For a woman, her stride length should be about 2.35 multiplied by her leg length. For a guy, stride length should be about, the ideal stride length should be about 2.43 multi multiplied uh, by their leg length. Now, in um, physical therapy, leg length is defined from the hip bone to the ground. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about from the, the leg length measured from the greater trochanter, which is basically the top of the hip joint, all the way to the ground, where the athlete's standing flat-footed, with no shoes, barefooted, uh, where the heel touches the ground, up to the top of the hip joint. You take that measurement, multiply it by 2.43 for a man, to know their, uh, or for a guy, to know their ideal stride length and multiply by 2.35 to know for a woman or for a girl their ideal stride length in sprinting. Now, when they're sprinting and you film them and watch them, they cannot hit those values, that stride length based on their leg length, by overstriding. That will make them sprint slower. The whole goal of the training process is to get to that ideal model stride length based on the athlete leg length by applying the correct force and without overstriding. This is how they sprint faster. Overstriding causes the foot to land ahead of the center of mass, creating braking force. It, it causes you to slow down. So at that moment, foot lands in front of the body. Body cannot leave the ground till the whole body gets in front, over the knee. So when the knee and the foot are ahead of the body, you have to pull the ground first and push. At that moment, you spend so much time on the ground, there is not enough time for your knee to come up high enough to be able to push the ground. and your shins and your hamstrings are exposed to injuries because the shock of ground contact with the, when, be, due to overstriding all will go on the foot and the shins. It can cause foot issues, shin issues, and landing in front of the center of mass and pulling the ground can cause a lot of hamstring in injuries.